Hello and welcome to this Nitrix tutorial on VirtualBox. VirtualBox is basically a program that allows you to install virtual machines on your current computer or current setup. Uh, it's free to download, it's from Oracle so it's trustworthy. Uh, just use your search engine and search for VirtualBox. Uh, I decided to upgrade to the newer version and I just also decided well if I'm doing that why not make a tutorial on it. So here we go. Basically just uh, download it, uh, right double click it or if you're on Windows Vista or 7 right click it and run as administrator. Then just next through it you can choose uh, the location that you want to install it to. Uh, next through that for me. Uh, do you want to choose uh, shortcuts on your desktop, uh, quick launch bar, just select which ones you want. Next that, and here don't worry about the warning, you can just click yes and then click install. Um, the installation is quite quick and then uh, once it's doing the network uh, configuration for your virtual box so you can use the internet whilst you're on your virtual box in the right hand corner here, at the bottom you'll see an extra uh, connection appearing. Uh, for me uh, this takes a little bit of a while to acquire the network address. Here we go. So uh, I won't wet let you watch that just so you know this is completely normal. Just let it finish what it's doing. Okie dokie, so when it's finished installing you can choose to uh, start up uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox straight after the installation or not. Uh, I won't for the time being because what we need to do is install our virtual drive. With a virtual box you can either use your actual CD drive in your um, computer or in your tower or you can install a virtual drive so everything is virtual and you can install whichever operating system you choose from a ISO file or an image. So I'm going to be using a DVD fab virtual drive just because it's free, it's lightweight, lightweight and it does everything I need it to do. Next through this installation, uh, I tend not to create a start menu folder and I also don't create desktop icon. I next through this and I don't launch virtual drive because it's not necessary. After that, I press the Windows key and R and I go into MS config. After I've done that, I press the Windows key and R and I go into MS config. I go to startup and I disable the virtual drive from the startup folder so it doesn't start uh, or this setting thing, I don't know what it is, it's not needed, it uh, doesn't start when the computer stops. Uh, you really really don't need it, uh, it doesn't mean that virtual drive won't work when you start your computer, it just means your computer will start quicker. Okay, then what we want to do is mount our ISO. Okay, I'm going to be using Linux Mint just because this new one came out and I want to test it. Right click it and I mount it to drive F so you remember the drive you mounted to. Once I've done that I'll see it's mounted correctly because this pop-up will come. Cancel that because I don't need it. And then I start up my virtual box. Okay, once we've got this so far, sorry about this, this must still be left over. Uh, once you've got this, you have a couple of settings. What we're interested in at the moment is new, and we want to create a new virtual machine. So we next through this, we give it a name, which in my case is going to be Linux M, or Linux Mint. And the operating system you can choose. You have Windows, you have Macintosh, you have uh, Linux, Solaris, BSD, IBM, OS2 and other. Uh, Windows, you can have anything from Windows 3.1, my favorite Windows, all the way up to uh, Windows 8. Both uh, 64 and 32 bit. Uh, we have Linux, so we're going to choose Linux and Linux isn't here. Uh, Linux Mint isn't here. Uh, so we're just going to go to other Linux and we're going to go next from there. Here you assign the virtual memory or RAM uh, that you want your virtual box to have. Obviously if you're using a, um, a Windows uh, 7, Windows Vista, Windows 8, you probably want to go up quite high to like 800 megabytes, uh, up to a gigabyte of, of RAM. 
uh, because I'm using Linux and I only have one gigabyte of RAM on my in my actual computer, I'm going to be using uh, 256 megabytes of RAM, which is more than enough for Linux Mint. Next that, uh, I want to create a new hard disk. If you have an existing one, it will reformat it and so on. Um, so next that, then here you can basically just leave it with the virtual box, box disk image or the VDI. Next that, then I prefer the fixed size, so I can specify how big I want um, my virtual hard drives to be and nothing actually changes from there. If you use dynamic, it'll start small and it'll gradually get bigger. Next is, uh, obviously here again, um, if you're using a Windows Vista, Windows XP, a uh, Windows 7 or Windows 8, you need probably around the 20 gigabytes. Uh, because I'm on Linux Mint, 2 gigabytes will be enough for me. Uh, so, select 2. Oh, there we go. So, 2 gigabytes of RAM for me. And here with the location you can choose where the uh, virtual disk image is going to be. So you can choose either on a separate partition that's only for virtual machines or virtual boxes. Or you can, uh, if you only have one partition, you can just choose which folder to save it in. Next this, and then we just click create. And what this is going to do is it's going to create the disk image and it's going to format it for the operating system that we are going to use. So if you're on uh, Windows, uh, XP and upwards, it'll use the NTFS file system because I'm on Linux, it's probably going to use the EXT 304 file system. Uh, so I'll let this finish and then I'll get back to you. Okie okay, dokie, so the um, creation process is complete. You can uh, look over the summary if you want. Basically, uh, well, I'm kind of guessing everybody remembers the settings they put in, so we can just click Create. And here we have our Linux machine. Um, once you're in here, you want to right-click on the uh, machine that you just created, you go to Settings, let that load up, and then you can go to System, and I tend to remove the boot order. I don't want the floppy. Uh, if you want the hard, hard disk to be uh, as a primary boot, you can change it here. Okay, so this is kind of like your BIOS would be, uh, but it's before you start the actual machine. Uh, display, I tend to uh, bunk up the uh, video memory. I have a 1 gig card, so 128 megabytes of memory for my virtual machine is no worries. And then I also like to enable 3D acceleration if possible. Uh, in the system you can change, if you use your virtual machine and you think now nah, I could probably do with a little bit more RAM or a little bit less, you can change it here. Uh, the processor, if you have more than one core, you can assign how many cores uh, you want to give to your um, uh, machine, virtual machine. I only have two cores, so I don't want to give it both of them, so one is fine for me. Uh, execution cap, you can limit uh, using the one the cores you give it, maybe 80% or so on, which gives you a little bit more playroom outside of your virtual machine. Um, storage here, you can add an extra virtual hard drive, and you can select your CD drive, and you go on the CD here. You click on it, and you can choose your actual hard uh, CD drive, or in our case, we're going to be using the virtual drive, so we choose the F, which is our DVD fab virtual drive. Uh, network, just leave this as NAT, which stands for network uh, address translation. Sorry, um, you can just leave that there. If you want to change it, those are the settings you have. You have a bridge adapter, internal network, host only adapter, and generic driver. Under advanced, you have a couple of settings you can change, but for me, uh, everything works on default, so that's what I'm going to leave it at. USB, if you connect a USB stick to your uh, computer, uh, you can add it here. So you just click on a little plus here, you can select your USB flash drive, and this means you can uh, copy and paste to and from your USB drive. Oh, I also want to add with the CD drive, if you do use your actual uh, CD drive, you can do pass-through, you can tick that, and this allows you to 
burn CDs from within your virtual drive. So that's basically it for the settings. You can also set up a shared folder. This is a folder that you can add files to and you can access them from your main computer or from your virtual drive. Uh, this is quite good. Uh, I would recommend you setting this up because maybe you're downloading stuff and you think, oh, this is good for my computer and then you can just put it in a folder and you don't have to download it again, saving, saving you time and effort. But for the time being, that's enough for us. Once you've done this, basically you just have to click on it, click start or right click and start and you can see the virtual box starts up. You have another boot option if you press F12, you can choose to boot from the CD if you want. And after this point it's basically just like uh, your normal computer, except that it's virtualized. If you want to have it as full screen, you uh, move your mouse inside the virtual box, you press on your keyboard, control and F, and it turns into a full screen uh, computer, so to say. If you want to get out of there, you press Ctrl F again, and then you move your mouse to the top or the bottom, wherever. And if it asks you about capturing the mouse and so on, you can just click Don't Show Again and just click OK for that. And that's basically it. So uh, I hope this helps some of you out. Um, thanks for watching, and as always, take care.